We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. This episode is supported by FX's Clipped, the scandalous story of the 2014 Clippers owner's racist remarks captured on tape and heard around the world. The series charts the tape's impact on a dysfunctional basketball organization striving to win against their reputation as the most cursed team in the league. Starring Lawrence Fishburne, Jackie Weaver, Cleopatra Coleman, and Ed O'Neill. FX's Clipped, streaming June 4th, only on Hulu. Matt, we are back. Uh, and not only are we back, you're back. You're back from international travels. Yes. Um, and we are back in Canada for a Owl Music special. How appropriate. That's where I just was. Yeah. So I've come back know? to New York to now talk about Canada. And now I'm so prepared and, and qualified. I've met Did you watch Canadian a lot friends. of were you watching tons of much music while you were up there? Obviously, obviously. It was actually funny. Brendan did reference it on stage every night because we did a cover uh, by the band The Tragically Hip, a very okay. notable Canadian band. And he was telling the story about how the only reason he knew them was because he got much music at his apartment in New York City uh, in the 90s. Because otherwise you would have really had no way of hearing about certain Canadian acts or seeing Footage like we're about to talk about. I mean, I'm sure that he was very familiar with Steve Anthony, who I guess is just a VJ <laughs> for much music that I didn't know. I mean, poor Steve Anthony. We got to start with the tragedy of Steve Anthony. Steve Anthony choking on a piece of chicken as he's doing a half-hearted apology for some unexplained thing that he said that got everybody upset. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what a great parallel, right? So uh, in... Uh, uh, Al TV on MTV, he manages to get this show by hacking into the broadcast waves, right? Like he hacks into MTV's broadcasting to get access to make his show. And in Canada, he just murders the VJ. Uh, I would argue that that man choked on that chicken without. Oh, I think Al poisoned <laughs> Al. him. Al seems oh. way too prepared. Al walks over right away and goes like, oh, well, isn't that interesting? What a tragedy. I guess I'll take yeah. over. Is it he oh, said, we're all going to miss what's his we're name. All gonna miss, look, we're all going to miss what's his name, but we got to move on. I don't know. I thought Al poisoned him. All right. You I'll, think it was you know natural what? causes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. I'll, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. And then it's, Al does it's this. Sus. At the very least, it's sus. It is very suspicious. Uh, and then Al does the great bit where he elbows the TV screen behind him yes. and it just changes from much music to Al music. Classic. Um, the, the, the choreography of it was pitch perfect. It no was. No notes. <laughs> um, I got a big old chuckle when he goes to the segment RSVP, which I don't know if this was an actual, here's the thing that's crazy is I don't know what are actual bits that were just regular on much music Agreed. and what's Agreed. an Albert, but the RSVP sounds for requested songs for video play, <laughs> which, I, which I think is one of my favorite, uh, anagrams in a while. Oh, that's good. And someone requests that soul asylum with all the missing rock stars. Yes. And we get uh, Millie Vanilli, Vanilla Ice, Debbie Gibson, and David Lee Roth as our, our missing musicians. Are inserted into the soul asylum uh, <laughs> the video for Runaway Train. I know it, it occurred to me right away. It's like we are fast approaching a, an Al record where he actually does a soul asylum parody. That's arguably not their biggest song by any stretch of the well, imagination. I, at this point in time, I guess Runaway Train is the most famous soul asylum song. Although I think it's I, still their most famous song. I, I think now it has to be, but also yeah. I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if... I don't think young people are aware of Runaway Train at this point. I That's could be wrong. Is that song still getting played? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, we'll talk about Soul Asylum more later, but uh, one of the more, um, I'm easily one of now the most like obscure uh, parody picks he has ever, ever done. So the joke that I always have is that I was just like, so I was late just enough to music mm -hmm. 
that I missed most bands' big hits. So, like, my first exposure to bands are always, like, these slightly more obscure second songs. Uh So, for me, my first exposure to Soul Asylum was the Just Like Anyone video starring Claire Danes, where she's, like, a bullied girl who turns into an angel at the prom. Like, it's, like, an inverse of Carrie. Um and I still like that song. I think that song's really good. Soul uh, Asylum's a great band. They're a great band. They, I, again, I, I always assume in these Al TV things, I mean, I think he is given a sort of box to to operate in, of course, and they must give him a list of videos, but he's obviously playing stuff that is of interest to him. So it's yeah. no surprise to me that this, you know, his uh, Soul Asylum, like he he must just dig Soul Asylum. Um, yeah, I don't see why yeah. not. They are a very good band. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Still out there doing it, too. Still out there doing it. So Al's opening some letters and he opens a letter from a guy who had his arms and legs ripped off in a freak gardening accident. Yes. And then he goes on to I'm not I didn't write the entire no, the letter is down. incredibly effusive and gushy and just being like, I don't have a whole lot to live yeah. for. It's like, I don't have a whole lot to live for, but I did write you this. I figured out a way to use a pen just to write you a poem i've been working on it for how, months yeah and, and i just, just i yeah. hope you read it on the air <laughs> like, and then al goes well normally i'd read it but we're running low on time and he just <laughs> crumbles up the immediately poem. crumbles it up it goes on for such a long time this this particular uh special has a lot of al being very dramatic and really like milking moments like there are a couple moments of this where al is delivering like monologue to the camera that is almost frightening <laughs> I want to make a theory here. Yeah. And this is and this is a very strange theory. Hear me out. Okay. But I feel like MTV is probably way more corporate than much music was. Uh-huh. And I wonder if MTV, even if Al was hosting it, had X amount of hours that had to have commercials, that had to have music videos played because of like different contract stuff mm-hmm. where much music is maybe was a little bit looser because I, you know, this was a two hour special. They did have commercial breaks. The commercials were cut out of this. I don't think that many music videos were cut out of this. I think that we only are missing like three videos in this hour and 10 minute YouTube video. Whoever made this also seems to have cut out Al's videos because Al is referencing the whole time how he's about to play uh, Bedrock Bedrock Anthem Anthem. and then it never actually happens. So some videos are cut out. Maybe it's just Al's. The, The videos where Al spoofs are definitely are there in included. Their Those are for sure there. Um, yeah, hard to know how much he cut. You know what I would theorize? I would guess that at this point in time, much music gave him more freedom to do whatever he wanted. But MTV, when he got the MTV slot, gave him more money. Yeah, that would be my, that's guess, my guess for for what was going on here. Because I, and believe me, I don't think MTV gave him a lot of money. <laughs> no, but, but, but I think the amount of recycled footage, limited. the amount of recycled yeah. footage in this is so vast. Like this. Seems to me like Al stood in front of a camera in the studio, shot a bunch of talking head type stuff in a day and then is referencing older. I mean, we're going to get to it as we continue down this special, but he keeps pulling older interviews and and, um, and because and uh, so for the listeners, uh, I slept in. <laughs> <laughs> so so I anytime that it was like an old vintage clip, I was like, skip ahead, skip mm-hmm. ahead, skip ahead. Like I wanted to get to the new stuff. Um, but there is a I mean, it literally cut. If this was an hour and 10 minutes long, I think I spent 45 minutes watching. We'll, we'll go because through. There it was cause... a solid 15, 20 minutes of recycled. Footage. Yeah, we'll, we'll go through it all. They He replays the interview with Sting. He replays the interview with Prince. He replays the interview with Springsteen, George Harrison. Like those are all revisited. Madonna. Madonna. There's Madonna's a ton in of them. Yeah. Um, but. But we'll get there. Yeah, so yeah, we'll get there. He gets a letter where he's like, this handwriting is terrible, but it sounds like they want me to play Dr. Seuss. And he's like, and this is, keep in mind, immediately following the we don't have time to read this heartfelt poem. I know. He goes right into a kid's letter for Dr. Seuss, requesting Dr. Seuss. And he does this weird, like, pseudo industrial music video style of Green Eggs and Ham. And this has led me to ask you a question of, do you know about my Dr. Seuss Green Day parody that I did? Oh, God, Matt Kelly. No, of course I don't. What are you talking about? (laughs) Uh, A couple (laughs) years ago, a friend of mine was a teacher and she hit me up and was like, it's Dr. Seuss Day. Would you be able to put Dr. Seuss songs to music and do Mm -hmm. like a 10, 15 minute performance for my kids? And I said, sure. So I like just figured out some chords. But one of the songs I performed was a song that I named Green Days and Ham. Oh, God. In in which 
I played Brain Stew but sang the lyrics to Green Eggs and Ham, and it fits impressively well. <laughs> like, it's like, had you, like, uh, were you aware of this first? Did you know no, this? No, I had no clue about this. So it was, I do not like Green Eggs and Ham. Wow. I do not like them semi-am. <laughs> like, oh, my God. It fits so well. Uh, but this, I was just, like, filled with joy during this weird, like, Nine Inch Nails music video inspired. So I love this ham. because I think what we're getting at here is, are you aware that the Green Eggs and Ham thing that Al did is a parody? No. That is a parody of Numb by U2. Oh, that I was like, what song is this? Because I could tell that it was something. That was it. Is uh, and and it is, un, is unreleased. Thing. Other than this, this is the only place this appears. It is a full on parody. I mean, it's like a little bit truncated, but it is a parody of "Numb" by U two, where he put in the lyrics to uh, "Green Eggs and Ham." Apparently, he got permission. He was going to record this properly, and he got permission from U two, but was denied permission by the Dr. Seuss estate. Well, there it is. It did not come out in any other form other than in this special. I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the list of unreleased songs that we need to come back and cover if we didn't get to them. Because I I mean, I have to say, here's the thing. Here's the thing, because this is this is the first one of these we've hit arguably since the first episode when we were talking about like Belvedere cruising and that kind of stuff like this borders on being rankable. I actually do think you should keep it in that list. I don't think it's going to get ranked with the discography, but as we get to the end, like I actually would love to revisit this and okay. and, and maybe do a ranking of his unreleased material or his like B-side, like secondary, because this is so good. I loved this so much. Like this is it's so weird. And it's like the 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 track is great. I, we're not, The thing we're not talking about for people who don't know this, you can actually just look up Weird Al Green Eggs and Ham, look it up on YouTube. And this clip from this special will be there. Um, and the little like quasi music video they make of just Al in the studio singing this song while people appear around him. Two women come up to Al from both sides of him. And as he is singing the song, just start licking his face. And he does not react. He has no reaction. And these women are like going for it. They're go- and, <laughs> and they are like, I mean, it is it is graphic. <laughs> it is graphic, but like it's also one of those things where the um, the thing that impresses me the most is how like Al makes absolutely no movement whatsoever as it's happening and it's like yeah. if you have anybody lick any part of you even if you know it's coming, your body normally like <laughs> Oh my it's god! Like, like, reaction like I, I, that's what and I would they, think too. I mean, he's a pro. What can you say? He's a pro. They are but like literally going at his chin face. to forehead, licks <laughs> yeah, up and like, like I, it is. You gotta watch it. <laughs> you gotta watch it's it. Crazy. I, I wrote it down, and then later on in the video, they kind of disappear, and then they come back later, just like hitting him in the face with their feet. Yeah. I, I, I literally again, wrote in my notes. I so I wrote this rules. I want to rank it. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't do it right now, but I think we should come back to it later because I really do like this is far out, guys. I highly recommend like easily that like uh, not to spoil the rest of this episode, but for me, easily the highlight of this whole special is this green eggs and ham moment like this is this, great. There's a couple there's a couple big highlights, but this is probably the uh, most memorable. Loved part. it. Loved it. Um, the part that I. So let me tell you that this is what I think is a one of the funniest things in this video in this entire special, but b also the thing that has aged the absolute worst in this video is when Al is talking about how he can control the music videos and whatever he wants to see, he's going to see. Mm-hmm. And he goes like, I want to oh. see a big fat pig playing a bass. And we cut to the Primus video for Mr. Crinkle. Just a and really I quick scream. Just a really quick shout out. <laughs> I, I did, too, because that is Primus. Uh, look, I'm a bass player. Primus is very near and dear to me. One of my absolute favorite bands of all time. I had never seen Al reference Primus before. So for Al to call out a Primus music video, oh, my heart, and I, my heart and, soared. And that is, in my opinion, probably the deepest cut Primus video. Because I think was that, that video was hit. so weird, MTV didn't really play it that much. Primus' song, Mr. Crinkle, which is a one-shot <laughs> music video of Les Claypool playing the upright bass in this massive pig uh, costume that well, like, just crazy shit happens and, around yeah, him in the all background. these other things happening in the back uh, it is as 
even for Primus' standards, it is weird. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just love, of all things, for Al to shout out that he, he played the Mr. Crinkle video. Oh, thank you, Al, yeah. so much. So he wants to see a big fat pig playing bass. He wants to see a guy with his head covered in snakes, which cuts to the best Red Hot Chili Pepper song of all time. Soul, Soul to, squeeze. to Squeeze. Soul to Squeeze. It's such a good song. But then he says, or maybe I just want to see a midget dancing, and then it cuts to Prince dancing in a music video. And it's just another one of his classic punching down on Prince moments. I mean, he, do we think did Al see Prince uh, blow up a cigar in his face in the Party Man video? And now Al's the, like, oh, we're it's on. It's the only thing that makes sense. This is the <laughs> hottest rivalry in music. Easily. Um, Forget about Drake and Kendrick. This is what people are talking about, which should be this talking about. This one's been lasting longer, Al for and sure. Prince. Al and Prince. <laughs> Someone asks Al what his favorite snack is, and it's a, I believe I wrote this down correctly, peanut butter, watermelon, and used motor oil sandwich. On whole wheat bread. Uh, on whole wheat bread. Um... There's a thing where someone says, hey, Al, what's that thing on your chest? And it's it's a brilliant bit of like the snakes popping out of the can where he opens up his shirt and all of these like foam snakes explode out. It, it was, it was very of, good. He's like, oh, you got me. <laughs> and then yeah, someone good. asks if he knows Sting. And this is where we get to the old Sting interview. Mm -hmm. And then we get our first commercial break. And I have to ask you, this first commercial break segment, Al says like, don't leave or else. And then there's a guy riding a bike that he just runs up to and grabs. And I cannot tell if that was an actor or just good old fashioned guerrilla cinematography. I mean, for it Al reminds me of in a previous uh, much music special. We saw the Al, Al with the, the microphone street. doing yeah, Billy on the street, basically, and running up to people with the microphone. It felt a lot like that. So it did seem like a random person. But Al grabs the back of the bike. <laughs> <laughs> While this guy is like Al sprints down the street and grabs this bike. Like if that man was not in on the joke, that is terrifying. Horrifying, that is yeah. a terrifying thing. Like <laughs> I would have assumed I was about to be killed or have my bike Al stolen at the very least. Every one of these going to commercial bumpers involves Al chasing down something in the street. And it's the thing that I take away every time is, man, Al Yankovic is fast. There is like, there is some real intensity going on <laughs> in this uh uh, in, he's in keeping this pace with a car at one point. He, he's, <laughs> he's chasing cars down the street. I mean, yeah, he he is. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. This whole one. And again, all the way down to like his the intensity of the running and stuff. And then we're going to come back. And he is like the next thing that happens is he delivers this monologue. Uh, he reads a piece of hate mail that he received. Which I, I have to ask, do you think this is a real letter that they got or a bit? Because it sounds like I it, could, like have it been. could be either. It sounds like it could have been a real letter. The best thing about it is this push person just going like, why would you have given Al screen time on this particular date? It was the previous Much Music special. Yeah. And uh, he contributes nothing of value. And what a waste of everyone's time. It, it read like it could have been real. It's the only thing about it. It felt like it could have been real, but from someone who almost certainly would not have been watching much music in the first place. Yeah. It felt like too I mean, old, like an elderly woman who stumbled on the wrong channel. Like I, maybe, I don't know. I, I, I was of two minds of it because part of me was like, this is, this could be real. And he's, it really was cutting to the signature and him making fun of how awful the signature is. He, yes. Like, like that almost feels personal enough that this could yeah. have been real and Al's just like I'm going to read this letter mockingly and I'm going to make fun of how bad their penmanship is on the I signature. think it might have been real I also love <laughs> as he is reading this really dramatic over the top letter the the letter appears in the background like a like an over, like a superimposed image of the letter scrolling down like you're watching like a Ken Burns Civil War say, documentary like Ken, yeah like a Ken Burns Civil War documentary and as he exactly finishes the, the letter it zooms in on the signature at the bottom of the screen like it's a George Washington like a document yeah. that I really genuinely laughed out loud at that, how ridiculous it was. Um, it was so funny how it was shot. Um, but then Al like looks down at the camera, like from a like he's he starts delivering this like monologue to the camera about how sorry he is, or he's crying. He's like on, look, looking down at a camera, crying, uh, apologizing for making fun of videos. That was it. Now I'm remembering. She said, she's like, I don't like the way that he made fun of the videos, like the way that he yells over the track or inserts himself. Yeah, I think that's rude disrespectful. And inappropriate. Yeah, it's, it's disrespectful. That's why I think it could be a real letter. It sounds like it could be a real letter. Um, um, and, and he gets so apologetic and he's crying and he's like, I don't know what I was thinking. and I promise to never do it again. 
But it is like that angle of Al crying like down at the camera. Like I had a moment I was like, this is like <laughs> intense. Yeah, it was a little and then, scary. And then we get the heart shaped box video with oh. him doing the voices and stuff. And it is so funny. The the three there's three things that made me laugh out loud watching this video. And the one is the reoccurring him of him yelling focus anytime that Kurt is out of focus. Yep. But whenever Kurt has the smile and he does the like, <laughs> like, like laugh when his face is hit shot, yeah. got me laughing so hard. And then at the end, it's the Kurt, look at the camera. Yeah, Get look the at the hair out of your ass. It's a video, Kurt. You got to look at the camera. <laughs> And then, like, yeah, the funniest bit is like, push your hair out of your face. Your hair is covering your face. You got to move it. And in the video, Kurt pushes his hair back. And then Al's like, oh, great. There you go. That's better. And then as soon as Kurt lets go with his hand, it falls it right back right. in front of his face again. <laughs> and Al's just like, no, what are you doing? This isn't a bit about anything Al says, but I also just haven't watched this video in a really long time. Yeah. And I think I forgot how surreal some of the imagery is. Yeah. But one of my notes was, I know it's forced perspective, but I forgot how gigantic Chris is. Chris Novoselic is like, he is like <laughs> twice the size of Kurt in this video. It seems like, like he could step on him and hurt him. He's uh, so tall. Yeah, he's very tall. And then, tall. yeah, at the very end, he goes, all right, give us a pretty smile. And Kurt does have this like middle schooler school photo smile. Yeah, like face. a fake, like, in, like over the top <laughs> smile. And then Al's like, hold it. All right, and I think he says, and cut. And as soon as he says cut, Kurt drops the smile and goes to look away. Yeah. It's like right before the video ends. Yeah, the other thing I liked, because again, that video has like the Jesus figure on the cross the whole time, which Al yeah. keeps calling Santa because he's wearing a Santa hat. Yeah. So Al keeps calling him Santa. And then he just at one point, Al yells over the video, just goes like nice abs <laughs> to Santa Jesus on the cross. I was like, well, that is that, that's like. They really let him do whatever he wanted to do. Um, it's so good. Again, um, I can't believe I just have to say one more time, like because we're like there's more of these coming up. Like Al is literally yelling over. Not only is he inserting jokes like MST3K he's style, just screaming but he lyrics. Is screaming the, in the chorus of the song. He's going, hey, why? Like yelling <laughs> over the bands. I cannot believe they let him do that on MTV, I, on much music. I cannot believe he was allowed to. To, I, I, now I sound like the angry lady in the letter, but well, I, just for so, legal purposes, I'm shocked that they let him do this. So at this exact same time, something else happened on MTV that I and Chris Ophelius have both talked about remembering watching, mm -hmm. which is that MTV let Wayne and Garth host an hour of MTV mm -hmm. because Wayne's World 2 was coming out. Sure. And I, this was fun fact, because again, I was a young child. This was how I first heard of Nirvana at all. Right. Was that this, because I was watching because I liked Wayne's World. Mm -hmm. And they showed this music video, and the bit was that Garth is like, dude, I think he's talking to you. And he's like, what? And he's like, it sounds like he's saying, hey, Wayne. And like, <laughs> and like, it was just like this bit of Garth and Michael Myers trying to have a conversation with uh, Kurt Cobain. Mm. It's not funny in retrospect, but at 10... I'm not even 10. I was like eight. At eight, it was the funniest shit I'd ever seen on television. <laughs> All right. Strap yourself in, Matt. We're oh about, it's about to get crazy here. Yes. So we go back to questions from the fans. And the first question is, what is your favorite album? Which Al gives my favorite answer. I wish every musician was this transparent. And he says, my favorite album just happens to always be the one which I'm currently promoting. <laughs> and then he tells everybody to buy Alapalooza. Then we cut to a person. And they say, hi, my name's Sean Jordan from Halifax, and I have a question for Al Yankovic, to which I paused the video, took a picture of it, sent it to my friend Sean Jordan from Halifax, no. and said, is this you in Al Music? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> so he's going to join us for the last Much Music episode that we do to tell us about his experience being asked to ask a question for for this Ask Al segment. But Sean Jordan, for those of you who might vaguely remember the name, is also a prolific nerdcore rapper named Word Burglar that has played many shows with like MC Lars what? and a lot of our previous guests. 
that is Matt Kelly. What a find. <laughs> I, I am I'm floored. He almost was good. I was trying to get him to jump on to this recording. I was right gonna now. say is this is a testament, <laughs> like we watched this you know, right before we hit record. Uh, wow. Uh, that is, I, I'm I almost, I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> you recognize someone from the much music. <laughs> Ask Al segment from what was what 1995. This is 93, 93. 93. <laughs> oh my God. That's just, I insane, couldn't believe Matt. it. Wow. I, I like literally, I looked at my girlfriend. I'm like, I mean, what are the chances that there's another Sean Jordan from Halifax, that's an, a weird Al fan. Yeah, seriously. That would be on this. Wow. Okay. I can't wait for that follow-up. I cannot wait. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end, what will I become? Senwa Saga, Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Hello, everyone. We're superhero stuff you should know. And if you think you know about superheroes and comic books, think again. We got romance. We got action. Romance. We got comedy. We got everything you need, man. Come on down to superhero stuff you should know for all your superhero needs. Uh, ro- I, I don't know about this romance. What part are you talking about? We've got all kinds of sketches and then deep dives on top of that. Come on down to superhero stuff you should know. <laughs> all right. So come on down to... Su- Wait, why did I say come on down? To superhero stuff you should know. So then we get this bit where Al is still making fun of Prince, uh, this time because he's changed his name to an unpronounceable symbol, which we've talked about on a previous episode. But again, we'll just quickly explain. That is a ve- actually, as much as he got mocked for that, it was a very smart move to get out of a contract, basically. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the shortest version, I mean, was, he had a lot of, Prince had a lot of uh, label issues, but uh, the funny, the bigger one, which seems so innocuous now, is Prince was actually making music faster than his label would let him release it um and he wanted to keep putting out records and they were like no you have to like you know there's album cycles of like promotion release tour this is just the standard way the industry works and prince wanted to keep cranking out records and they said no and so by changing his name to symbol or artist he was able to release music through a different he found a contract loophole that allowed him to release additional music under a different name um and that was his way of getting around that and ultimately Eventually, after a few years, he got the the Prince rights back, and then he switched back to uh, Prince. I think Musicology was the first record as Prince again. Yeah, we got which I love that album. Yeah, um, we we get a bunch of recycled in, uh, clips back to back to back here because yeah. we get the uh, the full the Prince Burn. interview, which I I have to just really quick one more time. I love. Uh, we talked about on the last one his like the the question about the beach ball. Uh, yeah. About how uh, Al, <laughs> Al asked him about his new beach ball, and he goes, it's multicolored and very fun. Yeah. Um, but the other one, the other line that I love is Al sits down to do the interview, and there's a whoopee cushion on his chair, and Al just like sits on it and then goes like, Prince, did you do this? And it cuts to Prince, who has this really coy look on his face, and he just goes, don't you like surprises? <laughs> I just I don't know the way I I just love it's Prince perfect. and Al so much and and maybe that makes me feel like I should pick a side but I just I actually love the rivalry so much too it just all works really well for me it makes I, me so happy nothing nothing makes me happier as someone who is in the same boat as you yeah like we've talked about it a million times but that that leaked audio of Prince just so Ugh. excitedly discussing the Weird Al Fat video know, is yeah. like one of my favorite things to play people. and obviously Al is a huge fan like it all yeah. I think it's all done. From love, I I, yeah. I hope he's, they're just it, like he's oozing joy for this video as so. he's talking to it so. to his friends for so, sure. Um, we get the repeat of the David Byrne Hammer bit from yep. one of his videos. I think I'm pretty sure the solar powered blender oh, sweatband yeah. thing is a repeat. Oh, we've seen that. Yeah. Um, the vintage Madonna interview is a repeat, and we go through all these old clips. 
But then it's this great callback to he has to go to commercial break and he goes, well, we'll be back soon with more videos from me. And then he just holds up the symbol paper again. Yeah. And it was like just long enough that you forgot about the joke for a split second. Yeah. Um, and then he goes, ah, actually, I'm getting tired of this. I'm going to change my name to this smell. And <laughs> and then we, we cut to commercial I love that. Break. You know, he just sprays perfume in the air and he's like, this yeah. smell, this is my name now. Yeah, this is my name now. Uh, we get a repeat of the high owl person behind him in the window. Um, yes. And the first time he did this on Much Music, he had security basically arrest the guy. This time it said he's talking and the guy is getting beaten up and mugged. And he keeps holding up different signs I begging know, for help. It's full on Looney Tunes, like Wiley e. Coyote holding up the signs of like, help. Oh, God, they're killing me. <laughs> and Al just keeps doing his uh, his questions and stuff. Yeah. It's good. Uh, and then we get, uh, I, I wrote this down. You actually have to appreciate Al's ability to repurpose as much old stuff as he can. Yep. Um, because someone asked him what it was like to win his first Grammy. And he's, he uses the clip from the complete Al documentary of him, like giving the crazy Sally Field acceptance speech. Yeah. With the, the crown and the cape. They don't even ask what was it like winning your first Grammy. The question is, uh, what was, what would you say was oh, the, the best high point, the high point yeah. of your life? And Al goes, it was probably when I won my first Grammy. And then it cuts to the recycled footage. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it like it was eight years ago. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we get the George Harrison interview clip. Well, there's then one we... more, just one more quick. There's oh. in the other unhinged rant he does where someone asks, can I have your autograph? Mm. And this kid says like, hey, Al, my question is, can I have your autograph? Yeah. And Al, again, gets super intense and just stares down the barrel. He's like, you know, I give and I give and I bleed myself dry for you people. And it's not enough. Sure. Why not take an autograph? And he like scribbles something on a piece of paper. Is this enough? Here, take my shoes. He's throwing his stuff at yeah. the camera. And then he take rips out his heart. Beating heart. He yeah. literally rips his heart out like, uh, you know, uh, Temple of Doom style and uh, and hands it, you know, shows it to the camera before he collapses. But yeah, another like. This is like if you want to see uh, Al pretending to be extremely angry, this is the the special for you. Um, so a question that we'll have for Sean, the word burglar Jordan in a couple Oof. weeks. I don't know if Rapid Facts is an Al music segment or just a regular much music segment that he's like having fun with. But I have to say that I thought that these jokes were more misses than hits. For I, agree. This was, I agree. I agree. This was this, real bad. I assumed this <laughs> must have been a um, uh, a regular segment like, you know, MTV News or something like that, like just the quick bullet point updates on what's going on. Um, but yeah, not great. He makes a joke about Gilligan's Island, the movie. He makes a joke about Macaulay Culkin doing Home Alone 3. It's actually all sequ- I, I'm noticing what I wrote down. So I there's a good an amount of sequel two. stuff. Well, there's he makes a joke about Kim Basinger yeah. uh, being sued for boxing Helena because yep. she left the movie and then saying she's also being sued by my stepmother's an alien for not leaving the movie. Right. Um, he has a bit like there's a good setup here where he talks about like Lauren Michaels do the success of movies like Wayne's World and Coneheads is decided to uh, make movies for all of your favorite SNL characters. Oh, every SNL sketch gets a movie now, yeah. Yeah, but all he did, the only reference he makes is like an old Joe Piscopo character yeah. from like 10 years ago. And I'm like, really, Al? Like, you couldn't pull any other more current but equally like bland Al joke? loves his, uh, Al loves his, uh, his, uh, his references. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I did get a smile when he talked about uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yes. He said, despite the fact that the Super Mario Brothers movie has bombs, uh, we they have greenlit a hundred million dollar Pong movie starring Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. Which just like the, I just finished reading the book Last Action Heroes, which is mm. like uh, about the history of 80s action stars. And man, I mean, most of them don't seem like great guys, but Steven Seagal is just a special type of shitty person. <laughs> like, have you seen any footage book. of him with his like blues band? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's real tough. Yeah. Real tough. <laughs> so don't be an old we, white guy who joins a blues band. No, d- never do it. Don't do it. Um, then we get our second Al yelling over a music video segment and we get R.E.M. Man on the Moon. Man on the Moon. For now, a moment first, there, I thought I was thinking like, oh, we've seen this before. And I was like, oh, no, that was losing my religion. <laughs> we yes. have actually not seen this one before. We get the squeaky pants as he's walking <laughs> thing is so funny. Like, makes me laugh so hard. But did you... I have a note that is in all caps, and I'm curious if you wrote down the same thing that I did, because we get an early hint 
of a future Al song in this. Ooh, I don't. Maybe I didn't get it. What is it? There's a scene where Michael Stipe, Stipe is walking down the street and a pickup truck comes around the corner and Al's commentary is, I'm driving a truck. Oh, I'm that's driving right. a pickup truck. And I said, oh my God. This is, it's the start of the truck driving song. You're that actually right. like, It's like six years before he actually yeah, writes this song. Yeah, that's a ways song. away. That's a ways <laughs> like away. I, oh, good catch, I Matt. screamed. The other bit that is so funny is the end of this video. If you haven't seen the Man on the Moon video, he walks into a bar and now everyone in the bar is singing along with the chorus. And Al does a specific voice for every patron of the bar. And it just is constantly getting funnier it's and like funnier. It's like at least a dozen voices he does. Uh, it's so good. He's really good at it. A couple <laughs> of them, I felt like it was Al doing his best impression of like another voice. Like there's like a straight goofy voice in there. Yeah. And um, one of them was like a Simpsons type voice. Like it felt like he was trying to pull other things, but Al Al did doing all those voices very impressive. He absolutely could have a voiceover. Uh, I mean, I know he's done some voice I mean, work. He kind of does. He, he <laughs> does. He does do voice work, but uh, it, I was impressed at how much of it he did. Yeah, that was easily the highlight of the whole thing. The other weird bit the whole time is like every time the lightning strikes, he just screams in terror. Yeah. There's like a lot of lightning as Michael Stipe's walking around. And every time there's a lightning strike, he's just like, ah! Ah! <laughs> like, um, yeah, I, I actually wrote in my notes for this. I just again, like I just wrote, this is such a weird thing. <laughs> Like it is just the strangest thing he does. I, I cannot get over it. Like it's bizarre. Um, it's so. Here's the. Th this is a genuine thought that ran through my head while I was watching this, and it's something that like sure maybe it's a bit of an old man yelling at cloud. Watching stuff like this actually does make me bummed that the internet took away so much stuff because like we don't we will never. I can't imagine another world. Where, A, that a channel like MTV is like one of the biggest, most popular channels on television, but then that you would get stuff like this where like mm. a random comedic musician takes over the channel for three, two to three hours and just is roasting the biggest yeah. musicians. Like it's just, it's such a like very specific snapshot in pop culture that is like being captured here. And I miss it. I, I like I think Netflix and these companies are trying their best. They're trying to do like the live roast of Tom Brady. Like they're trying to do these like somewhat like big moments. But like yeah. streaming has the biggest thing that streaming has taken away is the idea of like the, the communal act of like, yeah. oh, this is the time that this thing is airing and we've all got to get together and watch it. And we're talking about it. And like that's really outside of like award shows now is kind of fall into the wayside it's kind of true yeah i mean yeah. or like a sporting event is yeah, the thing where people will join but, really but there's um uh yeah no it's it's it has definitely faded and also just the sense of like on live tv you always felt like it was possible that you could see something crazy that yeah. would you wouldn't see again like if you missed it on tv that was it like yeah, the idea of revisiting it later <laughs> didn't exist i've joked before about on on these um uh, specials that we're watching of Al like at this time in the 90s and especially back to the 80s like I can't imagine he would have ever thought anyone would revisit this stuff this was like well, a one and done and then it was over and that was it well like, and then um so recently on one hit thunder I don't think the episodes come out just yet but my friend Joe was on and we were talking about he, he brought up physical media mm -hmm. and I was thinking about this I just mentioned the roast of Tom Brady um but this also kind of works out is he talks about how like, you know, he likes that he has Lizzo's newest album where she uses a word that she later realized was not an appropriate word. Yeah. So on streaming, they pulled everything down. But because he has the physical copy, he has that original lyric. Yep. And like on the Tom Brady roast after that aired live, like there was some negative critique. So they pulled anything that wasn't considered deemed like appropriate yeah, out certain of jokes the rebroadcast. Yep. And it's like, you do, you do lose that. Like, like it's great in one sense that you're able to like fix mistakes that mm -hmm. you've made, but it's also like, I don't know, sometimes life 
is more interesting with the imperfections and the failures also yeah, in yeah. there. Like, you could also just make the claim about like George Lucas trying to bury the original cut of Star Wars for so many years. Like he just like was like, no, this is the version. And it does bring up an interesting debate. It's like, yeah. The, Did you ever see the movie Fanboys? I didn't see Fanboys. I saw there was another one, uh, the People versus George Lucas. I think was a, a well. Like so a little People versus George I Lucas is a documentary. Yes, Fanboys is like a narrative film. Oh, okay. Then yeah, um, I haven't seen so, that. Fanboys is really, really good. It's it, The concept is that it's these four diehard Star Wars fans in 1998, mm-hmm. and they find out that their one friend has cancer and is dying, and they try to break into the Skywalker ranch so that he can see Phantom Menace before he dies. Oh, okay. Um, but there is this a, a slight spoiler. I guess I'm slightly spoiling That's fine. this kind of obscure movie. But uh, basically, they get caught but George Lucas shows sympathy towards the one kid and basically is like, I will let you and only you watch the movie. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about it. You can't tell anybody about it or whatever. So it's after he's seen the movie, they're like sitting by a campfire and they're talking about things and he won't say anything about the movie, but finally like it's just him and his best friend alone. He's like, seriously, is it good or is it bad or what? And all he says is, you know, sometimes there's a lot of fun in the fact that you can still see the strings and how things are made. And like, that's the extent of his like slightly negative critique of the movie. And it's like that is like there is there is a charm in looking at the shoddy puppetry and special effects of of those original movies that, that gets lost when you make it pristine and perfect yeah and i would um, argue that when you release something if you uh, even you can change it later like by all means like but you shouldn't take away the ability to see what it originally lizzo was. can make a yeah. new version of her record george lucas can re-edit his movie like that's his their, that's their right as a creator of course that's your right yeah but as soon as you give it to the world it doesn't totally belong to you anymore and then they yeah. the world has a right to hold on to something that's important to them and that they they want to keep so in, in the physical media side of things, I, I definitely totally agree with that. And uh, yeah. yeah, sometimes the warts are the best part. Yep. All right. So we get another one of these classic Al tour dates. I sat down and wrote down every single one of them. Ooh, so here Matt we Kelly, go. Very good. Yeah. We got the St. Vitus hospital bladder infection wing. We've it, got crazy, I, which I just have to point out. It's the one of the only things I wrote down. I loved. He said it's the St. Vitus hospital and the name of the town is Yellow Knife. Yep. I don't know why I liked the name of the town Yellowknife. That's that's a great name of a place. I think these are place. all real town names in Canada. I, I want to go to Yellowknife. Um, Crazy Bernie's drive through pet shop. Uh, he's doing a couple dates underneath the big nickel. Uh, <laughs> there's there's Uncle Ernie's all natural dandruff clinic and barbecue pit, but that got canceled due to some uh, issues. <laughs> Uh, then he's playing at Donut World still, though, so you can make the drive Donut there. Donut World always. Classic. Uh, Granville Sky <laughs> Sky Train Station. Uh, he's playing a couple shows uh, on the number one side road underneath the Big Oak Tree. <laughs> Big <laughs> Edna's Tofu Dungeon. Uh, Dirty Harry's House of Pancakes. Then he's going to swing to L.A. to finally get a shower. <laughs> and then there's Al Waxman's House of Raw Meat. And, of course, a sold-out month at Bob's House. A sold-out month at Bob's House, which, yeah, always goes up to the 32nd of yes. the month, if you look at the dates, yeah. Um, and then the other thing that blew my mind is we get a music video that I've never seen in my entire life, which is this Guns N' Roses Garden of Eden music video. Had no clue this video existed. Didn't know anything about it. I, I had to um, look this up. So apparently... This it's even weirder. I actually can't quite figure out because it says if you look up this song on um, Wikipedia, it notes the song was never uh, the, the garden. It's called uh, the song was never officially released as a single or sent to radio stations as promo. However, the band did film and release a promo video to music networks in 1993, and it appeared as the B side to the single "Estranged." The clip depicts various band members in sections of New York City, specifically Times Square. It was released to promote the Usual Illusion tour, but due to various scenes taking place in strip clubs, the video was not shown very much on MTV. That does not sound like the video <laughs> that Al is spoofing here. The video that Al is doing is them in a room. It's a one shot of them, of Guns N' Roses in a room, and the mic, like the camera is right in front of Axel's microphone, and they're just playing the song, and Al is inserting himself into the track. So it also says this on the Wikipedia for the music video. There are two versions of the video. One oh, made in go. 1992, one that has paper 
has paper flying through the air. This is the one mostly found on the music video sites like Yahoo Music. Okay, that's the And one. the other version has lyrics complete with a follow the bouncing ball, but no paper flying around. This is the version that is on the Guns N' Roses music video compilation, Welcome to the Videos. The video was also used as music video fodder of the for the MTV re-airing of the pilot episode of Beavis and Butthead. Additionally, Rolling Stone magazine ranked it the seventh best of the 17 Guns N' Roses music videos. I gotta say, I am not a Guns N' Roses fan, really. Uh, but this video was reasonably fun. I actually liked the one shot of it. I thought it was cool, even ignoring Al's contribution to it. I didn't. Uh, I didn't mind it at all. Yeah. No. It's um. It's it's a. I literally. I was like, I have no clue this thing. Exists. I also. I didn't like, see the original version of the video. I also noted, and this is funny because this is also coming off a tour that I just did. Apparently, on this song, there is a second lead vocalist, um, with Axel, and it's Alice Cooper. Oh, <laughs> and I think that maybe in the parts of this where Al is singing over the top, Al is going over the top of what would have been Alice Cooper's parts. I feel like that's the joke he's making. Maybe is that he is like Axel is singing and then where it's supposed to be Alice Cooper, Al appears and he's yelling over that <laughs> as yeah, if it's himself. That makes sense. I think that's that's what it is. And I, I just had to note, I wrote it down like Al singing in this version of this song is impressively awful. Yeah, <laughs> Al, Al is singing over the Guns N' Roses and it is horrible. Yeah, like, it's I, I laughed at how bad it was. I was like, this is this is really like I, it's not easy to sing that badly if you know how to do it. And boy, he is just like it's terrible. All right. So we're, we're pulling up towards the end of this special. Uh, Al starts hyping up the premiere of the Bedrock Anthem video. And there's this great bit where as he's talking about the world premiere, it scrolls at the bottom of the screen. Al doesn't know that we've been playing this video for weeks. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Yes, I like that. And then he doesn't even play the video. He goes, but first, here's a Pearl Jam or like whatever. Well, so this is where I assume he does play the video. Another really quick note to go back slightly. He also remember in the Bohemian Polka episode, I referenced how there was no, a video. No, that comes up next. That comes up next. It's coming up because, soon. It's coming yeah. up soon. But because they also, cut that out, too. They cut yeah. that out, too. But I'm assuming we see the setup to the Bohemian Polka video that he made using footage from Wayne's World and my Queen note and stuff. literally says, here's the setup to the Bohemian Polka video yeah, Matt spoke about yep. last week. Yeah, um, there you go. He also just uses a clip from Naked Gun, which like even out of the context of the rest of the movie is just so fucking funny to yes. me. Yes. <laughs> Every time this... <laughs> They're not here for you. Al Yankovic's on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we get one more collection of questions. Yes. Uh, and someone says like, what's the most painful thing that can ever happen? And he gives this heartfelt speech about breakups and he goes, oh, wait, actually, no, it's probably this. And then he shoves a knife into this rubber hand and is screaming. But the bit is that he answers like four more questions. And every time it cuts back, there's more blood pooling he's up around this. He's in pain from the hand injury he's given himself. Yeah. Another it's... real harrowing monologue from Al about the loss of true love is the most painful yeah. thing. And there was like, you know, when you find that perfect person, your soulmate, and you've connected and all these. And like, I mean, Al must have. I don't know if he's just uh, improving on these or if he actually memorized a tremendous amount of of, uh, of script. But boy, it's like a, a huge like he's like Al's acting in this one, arguably more than than many others we've seen. Yeah. And then this eventually leads to someone asking. It's always that someone's just like, hey, do you know James Brown? Yep. And it's always this bit of the lead in being like. Oh, yeah, him and I go way back, uh, but only I could sit down and really get their innermost thoughts pulled out. Like, he he has, like, the same yeah. setup to yeah. every one of yeah. these. So we get the vintage James Brown interview. No, hang on a second. I did not remember watching this James Brown interview. Have we seen this? We haven't seen it before, but you can just tell from the... You can tell it's old, but I was shook because I was like, I don't yeah. think we caught this back in no, the day. This was... This, this is a this is a first watch for both oh of us. Oh my god! But, oh my god! Well, then we have to mention a couple things very quickly. Go for it. One yeah. is Al manages to get he asks James Brown a joke, or he tells James Brown a joke, which is, uh, <laughs> "What could you do with a duck that you couldn't do with an elephant?" And get down. <laughs> He's going back to I want a new duck jokes. Yeah. This must have come from around that time period. So I just shout out to I want a new duck, our favorite Al song. <laughs> Throwing that in there, it made me very happy. Um, and then I also just love um, Al asks James Brown who his best friend is. And James Brown goes, my best friend is God, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and it cuts to Al and Al just goes, God is your wife? <laughs> and James just goes, yeah. 
<laughs> and I was like, all right, that's cool. Uh, it's a lot of like, it's a lot of weird, awkward pauses in this. There's a great moment where like it cuts to James and James just laughs awkwardly for no reason. And then Al laughs, laughs back and they're just both laughing at each other, like with not anything being said. And then uh, Al does the classic move where he asks people to do random stuff. And he's like, just like, give me a, give me a woo. And then James <laughs> does it. And then at the very end, um, Al says like, okay, that's cool. Now put on some stupid red glasses. <laughs> and it cuts to James holding these red glasses and James just goes, okay. <laughs> just puts them on. <laughs> like, and the, the delivery of that, like a James Brown's okay. Like, oh God, it wrecked me. That, that it's, made me laugh so hard. It's so, these are all, even like some of the old ones, like when I would scroll through them, I would always catch like the tail end of all yeah. of them. And I'm like, God damn, they're so funny. I don't, I don't so know where we this. missed that James Brown one back in the day, but that's a, that's a great, I was very happy to see that in here because that was the only we talked about all the recycled interviews like George yeah. Harrison was in here. There was a lot that kept coming back up. And and uh, that was the only one that I we had not. I'm seen glad before. that I'm not the only one who like was like, I don't remember this one. No. But it also no. like but like the way Al's dressed and looks, you're like, this is older. Oh, like, for this sure. Is it's a much older. Al, like, Al keeps referencing when he pulls back the clips. He's like, oh, yeah, this was a few years ago. <laughs> like, he's yeah. trying to explain that he does look different back then for sure. S- so the whole segment ends with Al going on a dinosaur tour. He gets a couple good. So weird. Uh, he gets a couple good bits. It's almost like he's just walking around riffing like in the room about stuff because he has the one line where he goes. And over here is the Albertosaurus, which, of course, was named after the uh, beloved physician James Soros. <laughs> he- Heinrich. It was a German. Heinrich. Uh, Heinrich. Uh, Soros. Heinrich Soros. <laughs> great. Great joke. Um, and then. We go. He goes. Oh, I want to catch this lecture, and it looks like it is an actual, genuine lecture at this tour. And the guy goes to a question, and the girl says, "Do you think Al Yankovic and Bruce Springsteen are friends?" And the lecturer looks very confused. And then the floor just opens, and Al pops out, and no one reacts. There's no one not reacts. a reaction from the audience as Al just goes, "Oh yeah, me and Bruce go way back." <laughs> like, Another one of my favorite jokes. Just yeah, the idea of this guy giving a lecture about dinosaurs, and the first question. <laughs> Do you think Al ever met Bruce Springsteen? And the lecturer is like, do I think Al met Springsteen? What are you? T-? And then Al just appears to be like, oh, yeah, that's funny you asked that. Um, that's a great, great, great bit. I love that. The it's whole a idea, great lead in. Al to basically, that yeah, he basically just says, he's like, oh, well, let's go to the dinosaur museum. I love science and it's a great tie in for my album. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. They really everything about this to me screams like they shot this whole bit in like a few hours and they were trying like what can we do to like fill this time and it's hey, with, the dinosaur yeah. museums down the street the can dinosaur we do museums right there. oh perfect i got a dinosaur on the cover let's go there and we'll see i have a t-rex in the background yeah i don't know how they it's, shot that lecture thing that seems like they actually did really crash a- <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, so, so funny good. yeah and then we get the um the very end he's like there's some like new discovery that they're trying to find and then he goes oh my god it's beautiful and it's just a freeze frame of the tap dancing claymation dinosaur from the jurassic park video as the lead into the last song on this Al TV, which is of course or uh, Al music, yes, which is of course Jurassic Park. Jurassic we hear, Park. We hear the music playing underneath as it wraps up, and uh, I, you know what, I do think I have more fun with some of the Al musics. It it feels so outrageous when you're watching it. it it really does they are they are wild i mean we're we haven't seen an mtv one in a bit so i'll be curious to go back to them but yeah no these have been really really fun it was this was kind of a long one it was like over an hour like an hour and ten with everything and but i had a blast watching it even well, the recycled next, bits were were great uh if i recall correctly our next al tv mm-hmm. will be right after we're done bad hair day because he definitely did one for bad hair day mm-hmm. which i saw i i actually remember watching that live oh, i'm jealous i didn't see that live i remember a couple bits from it mm-hmm. and i know that we have a guest coming on for that one because oh, uh cool. jeff has specifically called that one out as his favorite of any al amazing TV. we gotta get but jeff this will in there. also be the second one that we watch using the archive oh good al TVs, with everything which yeah. means that we might i mean you and i both might need to put aside like three to four hours because some of those archives great. have commercials and everything in it that's so we'll, great I'll, we'll we'll free up the time in the calendar I can do yes. it. Um, before we sign off on this, just two little things that I wanted to point out that we missed when we went through the uh, the episode. Um, one is we, of course, get a Harvey, uh, Harvey the Wonder Hamster reference. And I think it was the first time where Al actually sings the theme along to the Alapalooza track. 
he always ever he always did it uh, fully a cappella, you know, just sang it on the thing. And this time he's like, let's sing Harvey's song. And the song, the marching band beat from yeah. the from the record finally starts and he sings along to that. That was just a fun change on Harvey. And then other as soon as that's over, he tosses Harvey behind him as he always does. Um, yeah. And then the other one, he one of the questions that he uh, got asked that had a really and again aggressive answer that surprised me is um, someone asked him, what's the most embarrassing thing to ever happen to you? And he tells the story about how he did a performance at Buckingham Palace. And I immediately thought of Buckingham Blues and Al's clearly yeah. not a fan of the royal family. But uh, he uh, says, oh, I did a performance at Buckingham pa- uh, Palace. And after it was over, uh, they knighted me. And what I meant to say was, oh, thank you, your majesty. But instead, what I said was, thanks, you big fat cow. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, that is crazy. Like, and and then it just moved on very quickly. And I was like, wow, that is like, that's aggressive. Like he really is. Yeah. I mean, this is way, this is later, but I was like, (laughs) oh, it really, really took me back. I mean, Al going for it. Yeah. He does. He's not like the Royal family as we've learned. He does not like the Royal family. Well, he also, what we've learned over time is that he doesn't like tabloid magazines, and boy, are we going to be diving into that next week. Segways, so. segways. Great job, Matt. Thank you. Stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 